B-Rad Celebrity Stylist here, and I welcome you to the podcast. Our exciting guest today is Sandra Saradesi, international speaker, gifted healer, and intuitive. Uh, Bella Spada, Grandmaster, Grandmaster of the Runes, Yoga of Illumination instructor, spiritual coach and mentor, radio host, and artist. So I'd like to welcome you, Sandra, here to our podcast today. Thank you so much, Brad, for this wonderful opportunity to share myself with your audience and with the world that is ready to listen to our loving message. Exactly. Well, you certainly have an impressive list of things that you do. Um, Gifted healer, intuitive, um, you know, working with runes, a spiritual coach and mentor. I'm sure we're going to get into all of that. So uh, to let our audience know a little bit, let's kind of find out um, who you are, how you came to be, what you're all about, and what, what you do. Whoa, okay, let's put all those <laughs> con- con- <laughs> spices in the shaker. Um, well, let me, let me explain to you, like from an early childhood, I have always been attracted to, to what is called in one word, the unknown. I have always had a sense of being somewhere else prior to the moment when I was a child. And nobody had explained to me anything. Well, I was just, I couldn't even, you know, I think I was starting to talk maybe three, well, I was already talking three years of, three years of age. And I used to ponder a lot, where was I before? And my main um, attraction or my main hobby was to look into the sky, into the heavens. And I remember thinking, what is all that what is contained in there and i just felt like so much attraction to that vastness to that immensity and furthermore i felt like i couldn't share this information with my family and i remember feeling uh who are these people around me like how do i believe they're related to me it, it, i felt like a stranger within my own family and and I'm saying this with all my love and respect because for many of you you have had that experience as well and that means that we came into this lifetime with a higher heightened uh, awareness of what we're here for so I always had that within me and at a very early age I was very attracted into astrology and then at age 10, I was reading about reincarnation, which was like, I got to understand that this was my feeling that I didn't have the word reincarnation when I was a child. But I had that sense of one of these moments, I'm going to remember where I was before, because people just don't show up into one scenario because it had to be something else before that. So I was so happy to find that it, there was like some some evidence to what I always felt that I wasn't crazy, and and then I I pursue that. I always knew in my heart that there was gonna come a time where I was going to be of service to humanity. And and fast forward, I went to university. I studied communications, and but I remember when I had to do a, a speech in in one of the auditoriums. My subject was life. After life, that's how I, what I chose, not life after death, because I always felt that there was this infinite, eternal time where we experience life in different shapes and forms. So this was my topic. And, and I remember I brought an incense. In those days, we were allowed to bring matches, incense. <laughs> Nobody was going to be burnt yes. alive or anything. Mm-hmm. So this was to be my passion, and I always pursue it, you know, along my my journey, my daily day, my daily routine, um, just always going behind the appearances. And I, I started to, to read uh, and be involved with all the, the spiritual mentors in, more actively in 1999. So since 1999, in 2002, I started my practices of Kundalini Yoga. And in 2000 and, um, from 2002 to 2004, I was volunteering at the Learning Annex. They used to bring all the biggest authors, the speakers to Toronto. They had three quarters, LA, New York, and Toronto. And I was, I had the privilege to be in the presence and learning from the, the great spiritual teachers at that time, including the, the teacher that I have been studying close 
closer for the last uh, over what 12 years almost now, mm -hmm. which is Almin. So I met Almin in 2002 and then in 2006. So there was a gap where I didn't see her, I didn't pursue her, but she came back into into my life in 2006. And ever since I've been um, implementing, practicing and teaching all of her material in different languages and in, in, in different parts of the world. So I have had the privilege of seeing my miraculous life going into more miraculous all the time. And I say miraculous because um, what is a miracle is an extraordinary, unexpected event. That's my definition. <laughs> of exactly, a exactly. And 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 a lot of people think coincidence. A lot of people think, but do you, but do you believe that everything happens for a reason, or it is simply coincidence? No, absolutely, nothing happens just because happens. Everything happens because there is a larger plan, and. One word of humble advice would be um, never take life at face value and never think there is only one answer to your question. There are many layers of answers, but as long as we remain humble and open to continue receiving the information because nothing in it is as it, as it seems. And this little gem that is so profound it really brings us into the, the principle of, of eternal rejuvenation. Mm -hmm. Discovering behind the appearances is one of the principles of rejuvenation, living life from the poetic perspective. So through the right brain, if you will, so people mm -hmm. are used to talk about the left brain, yep. the logic and the right brain, the creative brain. Mm -hmm. The ideal brain is not either one, is when both merge. Yes. Yeah, because I find with, with, with hairstylists, they tend to be more on the creative side. They're more open, but I think a lot of us too. Um, I want to go back a little bit when you said about feeling like an outsider. And I think a lot of people tend to feel like an outsider in this world, or you feel almost like this is really not the destination, but the journey. So for people that kind of feel lost, do you have some words of wisdom or encouragement for them or how for them to be more fully? Well, thanks for this question, Brad. There, there are few answers to that. So let's look at why they could be even feeling depressed because they feel misunderstood, they feel alienated, they feel they don't, they don't have anyone at their level. And however, they feel that their level is not good. So <laughs> one of the, one of the, the main duties of us, I'm going to explain a little bit about what is a spirituality as a spiritual being. It's one of the duties of a spiritual being and what is the spirituality. And it's very, it's, it's a word that is taken, um, I would say, in a direction that is, doesn't really enhance anyone's perception. A spirituality means, are you spiritual? They asked me, I said, well, spiritual i know that i have this body to express myself so that's one mm -hmm. of the answers and being home for myself that is what really a spirituality means ah. so what do i mean being home for myself knowing that i am the creator of my circumstances and i am the cause instead of the effect when people are feeling sad disconnected alone misunderstood they are actually feeling the other way around they experiencing being the effect not the cause ah that's a very interesting perspective i heard before like some people believe too also that if you're vibrating at a lower frequency you're also attracting things that match that vibration as well absolutely so you if you're feeling sad if you're feeling disconnected you're feeling bam, 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 all of those like vibrations that it's like, a, the, as I say, the wall in the Game of Thrones, I like to use that <laughs> expression, because you will not manifest from a low vibration. Manifestation mm -hmm. comes from a joyful heart, from a happy place, from a place of fulfillment, because manifestation is an extension of you. 
is mm -hmm. as long as you are desiring something and, and wanting, there is no manifestation because that means it's separate from you. Exactly, exactly. Do you find that if people are, are resonating at a low vibration, is that how they're creating their own blockages? Well, they don't know how to come out hmm. from that. And it's very, very understandable. I, I am here to say that they, you know, we offer, I like, <laughs> I talk in we because I, when I work with uh, Bel Vaspata, the angels, uh, the, he, the angel healing modality that was brought by, by Almin, Mm -hmm. uh, and I've been practicing since 2007, uh, practicing and training and teaching other people. This is the, the beauty of this, this healing modality that you can do your own healing and you mm -hmm. can take yourself as far as you like to. This, this healing modality will release programs, release systems, blockages without having to think about it. Because when we start, if we go for therapy, um, I actually was having a client in uh, in Mexico just last week, and then somebody offered her uh, psycho psychology um, therapy sessions. And uh, she says, I think I'm going to do that instead of my healing sessions with you on the phone. And so first, we only had two sessions. And yes, you start seeing, I can see the miracle from the very first session, but two sessions over, 50 years of patterns, uh, I mean, it's, it, it, it happens, it's sustained, you'll never go back to where you were, but what I want to bring in here is the fact that what I said to her, and, and this is like, like I have learned that I speak and then I think. <laughs> <laughs> So I allowed. Yeah, I think uh, quite a few people can relate to that. <laughs> yes, but but I, but it's actually like if I were if I were to think first, the, these words would not have come like to put together in a perfect mm -hmm. in a more perfect way. Yes, I yes. said to her, I said, just remember that logic because she says it's only logical. She says to me, I remember. Uh, okay. And I said, Remember that logic not, not always brings bring happy results. Mm. Yeah, but I think with a lot of people in general, they always want to figure stuff out. They always yeah. have to be in control. I think that's one thing that people, and I think that's how they get themselves into stuff, by wanting to make everything so perfect in their mind. They have all these... Um, you know, perspectives of how things should be and how they view stuff. And I think it really creates, and a lot of it too is transgressional, uh, just, just down the layers of your parents, their parents, grandparents, that put stuff down the line that we all take on. So, and that, I think that kind of filters our view of things. And it, it can actually, I think, impede us as opposed to letting us grow as individuals. Yes. So our best friend and our, our best enemy would be our mind. Mm. So yeah. what happens with this Belvas Pata, it's a spell B-E, B for boy, E-L, V for Victor, A-S-P-A-T-A. -A -A. In the angelic languages, the meaning of this word is healing of the heart. Mm. Well, let's, let's go back a little bit what I was saying about the, the mind. The heart cannot heal or open. So first we have to open it, to heal it. Mm -hmm. It's like a wound. If you put a Band-Aid, it takes longer to heal. When you let it like organically heal with the air, with the elements of, of nature, mm -hmm. then it will heal closer, faster, sooner. So the mind is interfering with the heart. Mm -hmm. How can we follow our heart? So the mind should just be there when we need it for service, not chatting all the time behind our feelings. Mm -hmm. Because we have to learn how to trust our intuition, but the intuition is weak because the voices are always there. Exactly. Constantly, constantly on and on and on. So the heart, it keeps being confused. Oh, I'm confused. Yes, you're confused because you're making a decision from your head. What does the head know? What makes you happy? There's only one question we must ask. What inspires us? Mm -hmm. What inspires When you invited me to do this show, Brad, I have mm -hmm. to say, 
<laughs> I started to feel so inspired. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. This is way. To, this is the way to go. We don't exactly. have to think about exactly. it. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Following your highest excitement, following your bliss. And if it's something that makes you happy, I think, you know, then that's the right direction. And I think too, because the happier you are, the more blissful you are, the higher your vibration mm -hmm. rate is. And of course, then the people come into your life to reflect that. The events come into your life to reflect that. The situations come into your life to reflect that. Mm -hmm. and, and too, because when you're feeding off somebody's energy, if somebody's buzzing way up here, Either you go up to meet them or they come down to, to meet you if you're on a lower vibration. But I think, and that's the way it kind of happens. And like you say, nothing is really coincidence. We meet people for a certain reason. And we already have that in our situation. We meet a certain person and they don't even know they're playing an integral part in the bigger picture. <laughs> Totally. And the, this is, this is the, the, what we must cultivate, the art of seeing the larger picture. Mm -hmm. And also, don't get stuck because today you're feeling like very cloudy. And then just know that it takes one second to shift that. But allow that mm -hmm. one second to show up. So what to do if you're worried? I tell people, go and walk by the lake or walk by the ocean or go and sip a coffee on a terrace, or go to an art gallery, or play your guitar, or play the music, or dance, but know how to snap out of this. Mm -hmm. and if you don't have anyone to talk to, or if you're not taking you know, uh, healing sessions, or if you're not doing the spiritual coaching, or, or you know, it's like I have a, like someone I was talking to yesterday, one of my clients, and, and she says, well, you know, Sandra, um, what did she say? Something started um, shift. Oh, she says my business. She, this is what mm -hmm. she says. My business has gone slow uh, the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. What do you think it is? She asked me. And, and I said, okay, first of all, when we find the root of what it is, then we can start shifting. All it takes is awareness to start mm -hmm. shifting things. So she says, oh, it started on the Sunday. Oh, I said, that's when your daughter, so that's the day after your daughter turned 18. Ah. Interesting. And she had yes. worries about her daughter being 18. Now she's free. She doesn't listen to her. She's totally out of control. So, <laughs> All I that said, from one birthday? Wow. <laughs> yes. But I guess so, obviously symbolically it's what it means. Now it, it's not her little girl anymore. Now she's yeah. becoming an adult woman. Now maybe she's not going to need her as much. Now yes. and where her self-worth is anchored now is maybe being sh shooken up a little bit. I said, it started, she says, you are right. Okay, so look at what you're doing. Where's your focus? Why are you bringing this about? You are worried. So I also work with the Egyptian oils, with the fragrance alchemy oils. And we have a specific oil that assists and what, the, the sense of smell, Brad, I can wait for you to try these oils. They are, they're, they're high caliber. They've been tested with the, with, the, with the scale, how they test the oils. Mm -hmm. In any event, there's a flower called fuchsia. Okay, so, yes. Mm -hmm. So the fuchsia flower assists with worry and anxiety mm -hmm. about the future. And it, it, it also, it blocks the spleen meridian. So mm -hmm. we have oils for each meridian and to clear each of the negative emotions. And you just, it's instantly, you will feel, some people feel like a ripple throughout their body. Mm -hmm. As soon as they apply a drop, and it's, if it's applied in the, in the right meridian, the specific mm -hmm. meridian, then even better. Exactly. So the system, the skin system absorbs 10 times more than the stomach, as you know. Oh, so wow. There are so many tools out there, there, you know, uh, mm -hmm. I, I work personally a little bit with crystals. There's also the crystals, there's oils, mm -hmm. there is um, the, the angelic healing, there is music, there is yogas. I also teach the yogas, the runes. I mean, there is direction everywhere. You just know, you just have to know and find the tools that resonate with you. And that's exactly it. So just jumping back a little bit for audience that doesn't know, what's a quick version of what a meridian is? A meridian, imagine, is a door, like mini doors in your body. Mm -hmm. So, for example, the one of the doors to the heart, meridian, would be like you take your pinky and right on your 
on your wrist. Mm -hmm. And if you press, so I, the oil that works with the heart is the rose oil. Which uh, has yes. the highest vibration, the highest hertz, uh, megahertz on, uh, on, on the scale of all the oils. So mm -hmm. rose oil, this rose that we have is extremely pure. So pure that some people cannot take it. If there are so many blockages, people mm -hmm. would even feel nauseous with the scent. And then oh, because it's bringing all, that, bringing all that forward, bringing all bringing that up, up, and, yes. up and out, so to speak. Everything that is like been suppressed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because, which incidentally, I'm going to say the definition of depression is suppression. So mm -hmm. suppressing for so long will create depression. This is why expressing, not only expressing with your mouth, how you feel at all times, expressing with your clothes, expressing with your hair, your mm -hmm. lipstick, expressing with your sunglasses, your reading glasses. It's like you're just showing a side of you. You're showing mm -hmm. a, a, an angle of your, of your vastness. It's like, oh, you know what? I, today I feel like wearing red shoes, red mm -hmm. pants or yellow or whatever. Yeah. Those are expressions. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and we have to honor that. And sometimes I, I must do this more often, but I sometimes I ask my body, what do you feel like wearing? But yes. You know, I guess it's automatically sometimes. And that's why I don't, I don't have a specific like, oh, this is my style because mm -hmm. I have many styles. Exactly. And it's, uh, I guess, what we're drawn to and stuff. And I guess it's all about, too, living with intention, right? So basically, I guess if you have suppression, depression, if you live with intention, <laughs> that can kind of alleviate some of that, some of that as well. So you're making more conscious choices and you're doing stuff with intent as opposed to just going through life um, blindly, so to speak. Yes. Unconsciously, blindly, uh, superficially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you don't want to be, a, uh, what is, what is that? The scuba divers that the, the one on the, the ones that are on yeah. the, on the top. Like yeah. <laughs> they have the hair there, you can see that. Exactly. You like dive into, mm -hmm. go deep into yourself because, you know, you you are a project. I am a project. I'm my own PhD project. I mean, seriously. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I think that's really diving deep. I think is one thing that people are so afraid of. I think. Number one, maybe exposing yourself to others, but I think it's exposing yourself to yourself because you're afraid of what you might see if you go deep, which there might be something wonderful underneath and some great nuggets of gold. But you know what I mean? I guess we're just, we live a lot in, I believe, a, a fear-based society for most people. Yes. Fear is, is big. And it, it, I mean, uh, but at this point, I think they're tight. Worry and fear are like fighting for first place. So. <laughs> You could probably throw maybe anxiety in there as well because it probably comes hand in hand with depression too, I believe. Yeah, and the depression, depression blocks the thyroid meridian. It's a very common thing for women mm -hmm. in Canada, I, I found, because I have, I have the, the, the gift of living in different countries. And here in Canada, they have lots of surgeries mm. for, for the thyroid. Lots of women have no thyroid. And that is this, the, the center of sensuality. Oh, that I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, so it's, Learn something it, new. <laughs> yes, it is something new. And you know, the other thing that is very interesting is that the sense of smell. I have never found so many people that have lost their sense of smell like in here. Mm -hmm. And that is, relates to sexuality. And I have had clients that have at least three people that didn't have a sense of smell. And when mm -hmm. I applied the oil, especially the rose, mm -hmm. they recovered the sense of smell. Oh, wow. Do you or think the too, taste. Oh, the, the taste. taste buds as well? But mm -hmm. do you think that just over time, we've just been desensitized uh, so much through just a lot of the artificial fragrances, a lot of the artificial food additives, a lot of the things that our body now is consuming where years ago, what they call organic now used to be, you know, what it used to be like. We've just more bombarded with a lot more toxins in our life, emotionally, physically, spiritually, all this toxin now we're trying to deal with. I think it's just much. Um, prevalent. It's more prevalent. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I agree. I agree. So this is why we must take matters into our hands and take 
take care of our physical body because it's our vehicle. And mm-hmm. I, you know, we take care of our car, but we don't take care of the body. We know we t- we do the the oil check, the tune up, we change the tires, the winter tires, the this and the other. And wow, when I ask people, what are you doing in terms of joy for yourself? Mm-hmm. Exactly. I go like they go like silent flat. <laughs> I'm like, exactly. Are you okay? No, I, I don't think people consciously, consciously choose joy. And I think, too, the way that you treat the body is the way the body treats you. So if you treat it poorly, it's going to treat you poorly in return because it doesn't have the energy. It doesn't have the life force. It doesn't have any of that kind of stuff. But if you're conscious of conscious and mindful, you can bring in the right thoughts, the right people, the right things for your body. And in return, you know, I think it re- it'll reward you as well. Yes, yeah. And this is one thing that we must, uh, we were talking about the left brain and the right brain. Mm-hmm. So the soul is the feminine and the, and the body is the masculine. And mm. it, they always have been in contradiction or opposition per se to each other. And this is the reason why we have created the, the theater of life and the theater of death. Mm-hmm. Yes. And and I mean, and then we, we come here, we learn so many lessons, then we go to the other theater and then we forget. And then we start all over. It's like the, this never ending merry-go-round. I had enough of this merry-go-round. I'm mm-hmm. off this. I'm, <laughs> I'm off this. No more point in circles. I mean, I had it. Mm-hmm. I had it. And I'm going to clear absolutely every single relationship that I have dust starting with my closer immediate family mm-hmm. and because I don't want to go around no more. I'm done. No. So unifying the soul and the body mm-hmm. is a perfectly attainable goal. Yes. Meaning yes. we don't have to go anywhere, you know, like ancient and, and how many uh, uh, masters in the East have lived for a thousand years and, and, and nobody even questioned it. And now it's like, oh, we're making 200 years, a big party. I'm like, hey. what are you talking about? This is just, <laughs> it's nothing. No, no. Well, too, and, and, you know, as I say, they used to live longer, longer, longer. And I think one of the things is why they created, I think, uh, 65 is the time you retire is because most people at that time when they were paying Social Security and stuff, a lot of people didn't live past 65. So that's why they made it the age 65. Mm-hmm. But then people started living longer, taking more control. But I think there's a movement happening now where people are becoming more alive, more aware. They have a better awareness. They know there's something more than just coming in, punching the clock, doing your nine to five. You know, I mean, as I say, we weren't put on this earth, you know, just to pay bills and die. <laughs> there we're has actually, to be much more those, to bill, it. those bills are man-made. Exactly. So I'm, I'm just speaking to the, to the <laughs> infinite plan, to the plan mm-hmm. of source that is to explore myself Mm -hmm. and learn and have fun with it is this is not this is not a chore this is not a duty this is like a fun thing to do Mm -hmm. like i wonder what i'm going what i'm going to discover about myself and sometimes we attract people into our lives into in the shape of relationship because there is a part of me that i would not find out if i was not talking to brad this this day Mm -hmm. for example yes Yeah. And that's something I want to get into. And you mentioned now. So the next topic I'd like to cover is about relationships. So what happens when people enter your life? What kind of, um, I guess, influence can other people have on you energetically? And and just any more that you would like to add with that? Well, relationships, they could come... uh, as a contract. So we have soul contracts and then people show up to clear a a previous situation in another lifetime or because we have a contract that, okay, I want to learn about patience. So I'm going to attract this person that is not going to, uh, let's say I'm interested in someone and this person is not interested in me back. So I want this to happen right now. Mm What is going on? Why is he not looking at me? I'm just using like something very clear. Exactly, just general, yes. So you start like learning that things will happen in divine timing. Mm-hmm. And maybe this person show up to teach you patience, not to be in a relationship with you. 
Exactly, exactly. What about the people that keep attracting the same person? <laughs> they're in a relationship. Face, a yeah, they're in a relationship. It didn't work out, but then the next person they meet is exactly like the one that just left. And it yeah. just keeps just keeps becoming a repeated pattern. So is that person attracting that type of person? Is there a lesson they have to learn? Or is mm -hmm. it just just yeah. something they the universe haven't... is well, one of the things that I really like that uh, Almin said is be frugal with your experiences. Mm. So if you are frugal with your experiences, your life will be a kale kaleidoscope. Oh, yes. So yeah, you with will all the colors, all the stuff, all the, yes. <laughs> everything can be wonderful. <laughs> yeah, so exactly. be frugal with your experiences yeah. in terms of, okay, you know, what, why is this, happening again mm -hmm. why am i attracting this person what is this person here to teach me and and even like you know you can ask those questions but do not go into obsession no exactly the obsession obsessiveness drops the vibration drops mm -hmm. your well energy but there is beyond energy there is another um another uh, currency mm -hmm. which is for the body which is vitality exactly exactly so vitality is does it have opposite, but energy has opposites. So mm -hmm. first, we work with where we are, right? With what we have, with the tools mm -hmm. that we have. And mm -hmm. after that, when we enter into vitality, then we have more, the body will be more uh, vibrant. Mm -hmm. We'll have more vitality, well, more, y y y like people that don't look their age without having to use any artificial things mm -hmm. out there in the market. Why is that? because they have less tension in their bodies. Mm -hmm. The tension is that the poles that are pulling against each other, you know, it's like very common men fighting their heart. So mm -hmm. no, I don't want to be in a relationship. I feel so attracted to that person, but no, no, mm -hmm. I don't want to be there because I've already been burned before and I don't want to go there. But this is like a huge blockage. Mm -hmm. People bringing but, the but can, past yeah. into the present. Exactly. But you, do you also think it could be that the person is so afraid of number one being hurt before, but another one is being rejected. So if they expose themselves and say, you know, whatever they're feeling to that other person, that person's just going to reject them or it's going to change the dynamic. Well, that's brilliant. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to tell you that when you are home for yourself, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what others say to you. Exactly, exactly. And when you live from that high place of unconditional love, mm -hmm. who cares? I can tell you, you know what, Brad? I really think you're a wonderful person. I would love mm -hmm. to kiss you. And you say, mm -hmm. well, you know what? I don't feel nothing for you. Mm -hmm. I say, well, that's fine. I, you know, I express how I felt. Mm -hmm. And what you have to say to me back does not impact me. No, exactly. But I guess you have to have a self-love that, self that it's, not gonna, it's not going to crash your world. So if somebody doesn't like you or doesn't want to listen to you, you don't have to like now that, um, you know, your world is crashing now just because yeah. that person doesn't feel the same. It's unrequited. Um, even with hairstylists, you know what I mean? We deal with people all the time. They don't like your work. They don't like this. They don't like that. And then, they're, you know, as you say, you're crying in some, some hair groups. It's like, it's like this person didn't like me. They didn't like my work. Now I'm crushed and I got to, you know what I mean? But I think too, part of that story is where people get their identity. So if they don't have that story of what happened to them, they lose their identity rather than being accountable and having that self-love in their own in their own lives. Because yeah, if you do love yourself and you're about yourself, and this is not about being arrogant or about yes. being stuck up. If you have self-love for yourself, you're not going to put all your um, hope into someone else, whether they like you or not, whether somebody likes the performance of your, you know, what you're doing or a certain project or things like that, that you have enough. So one other question I have for you, the next thing is, how do you feel about um, twin flames and soulmates? Yes, I was, I was very much into that long time ago. Mm -hmm. And the way I feel about twin flames, yes, they're real. Um, depending on what reality you are, I feel mm -hmm. that we have more than one twin flame. Mm -hmm. it, it's like, you know how many lifetimes we had? Oh, so of course. Many, tons of lifetimes. Mm -hmm. 
so twin flames yes twin flame would be someone with in that you will feel mm-hmm. so connected and so attracted but it doesn't mean that is the only person mm-hmm. and it's it enhances your it, it enhances your your beauty it enhances the vastness of who you are it supports mm-hmm. you it's in your corner effortless yes effortless mm-hmm. it's not so like entering into a relationship where you have to train the other person i'm gonna show mm-hmm. you i need to tell you that i need my space so yeah. when i go and into the corner of the couch please don't talk to me so mm-hmm. i don't have to train my twin flame because my twin flame knows we because we communicate at exactly. other levels yeah, you just understand each other. And I think that's one big thing. And you hit on that point is when people go into a relationship, they're like, I can change them. <laughs> Before they even like go into the relationship, I'm going to change them. But are you changing them for yourself? Or are you changing them for them? Because obviously, if you need to change them, probably they're not the right person for you. And like you said, a twin flame already understands you, already knows you. I think you have this unspoken dialogue between you that you just you just blend so well so how would that differ the twin flame then between a soulmate well uh, you know or do you I believe think, they're similar i think it's very similar soulmate i think is more it could apply for a friendship as mm-hmm. well this is this is what i'm getting as you ask me the question because mm-hmm. um the truth of yesterday brad is not the truth of today exactly and, and as i'm you asked me, I'm accessing that. So soulmates, we have many friends and sometimes we have not only been males, we have been females, mm-hmm. etc. Mm-hmm. So we have probably has some connection with a friend mm-hmm. because perhaps we were siblings or we were partners or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. But I feel it's, it's almost the same. And when you are home for yourself, I just want to add this, mm-hmm. the type of relationship that you will be in is totally different Mm -hmm. and and my favorite part and i feel that it's pretty much the foundation of of a flourishing relationship is Mm -hmm. um need neediness are you entering in a in a relationship because you need somebody Mm. or you enter in a relationship because your heart is so full and you found this person that (laughs) <laughs> it's like, wow, you're like flying. You don't need to go in an airplane, right? So. Exactly. And like you say, it's two whole people rather than somebody saying, oh, where's your other half? So what happens is when that separates, you feel empty or you feel like you're not anyone. And, and I see that so, so much going out. People will say, how is so-and-so? They don't say, how are you? They like, how is your other half? It's like, you know, I'm here right now in this moment. And that's what it is. A lot of people are devastated when something doesn't work out because they're not a whole person going in. It's two broken people coming in together to try to make a, <laughs> you know, to try to make a whole, a whole person. And obviously it's not really like that. So jump, jumping forward. So what do you think are some of the human challenges that, that people have? Well, I have, I have been lately encountering how expectations are. So I would say expectations, letting go, mm-hmm. judgment. Um, those right now, like letting go, like, okay, so you, you had a breakup, mm-hmm. a, a physical breakup, but you're mentally, emotionally connected to that person and you you keep visiting that. And most of the time, the, the pain is not for losing the person. Mm. It is because of the idea, what it was, of yes. what it was. Mm-hmm. Or, or, I mean, these attachments of the heart, this I find very, very in, ingrained in the human DNA is mm-hmm. the memory. Exactly. So the letting go of the memory, then we enter into a relationship with expectations. Mm-hmm. So with an empty heart. Uh, that the other person is going to fill 
those expectations for you. Yes. I have yes. a hole in my heart and then somebody else can fill that and I won't feel lonely anymore. I won't feel alone anymore. I'll be happy all the time. Life will be wonderful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, I, you know, <laughs> that, is, that, is in, that is in paper, but in real life, <laughs> I mean, sometimes it's like, well, you know what? I just want to be by myself this weekend. And the other person's mm -hmm. devastated. What do you mean? You owe it to me. You're my partner. You That's right. You should be for me 24 seven because we're together now. And, and, but, but I also believe that even in the most closest relationship, I think people need their own time with their own thoughts and their own friends and their own lives. If you're together 24 seven, Eventually, what are you going to have to talk about? You're going to drive each other nuts, <laughs> I think. Well, you know, not always. There but has to be like, a balance. Exactly. Because aloneness and togetherness, yes. is, they have to come together. Mm -hmm. They have to come beyond together. Aloneness yeah. and time together. And, and we need both. Aloneness, we find inspiration. Yes. And, and, and in, that, in, in togetherness, we find other things like you know, passion and joy mm -hmm. and contentment. And we can find that in aloneness. There's exactly. so much we, we have to uncover for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then we bring all of that treasure to the relationship. Exactly. And I find a lot through meditation in solitude is when I find that a lot of stuff happens. And alone doesn't mean lonely. And people get confused with that. They think mm -hmm. if I'm alone, then I'm lonely. No, I love solitude personally because that's when the greatest things happen for me because there's no distractions. You can be one with, uh, as I say, your beliefs and that sort of thing. And sometimes you just need to meditate, need to calm, need to whatever. But same with letting go. I think it's not just with relationships. I think it's also with maybe a, a pet, family pet, a loved one. Could even be some... Uh, some possessions that you have that you can't let go of. Here's my football jersey from college. <laughs> I can't let it go because there must be memory or something attached to it. So for me, there, there's probably more me or just us in general. There's some pain attached to that by losing it rather than keeping it, even though the moths have eaten it and it's <laughs> de decaying and it's wasting away, but I think it's that memory, like you said, it's that thing that people don't want to let go of because uh -huh. it's part of their, their identity and part of the, as I say, it's a plain, pleasure, plain yeah. pain pleasure sort of yeah. thing. There's more pain to let it go than the pleasure of keeping it, even though it may be taking up room and space and, and stuff like that. But I think a lot of people, too, have a fear of, of being alone. Do you believe that also? Absolutely. I absolutely believe that there is, I don't know, maybe we, if we do a survey <laughs> in the world, it yes. would be like shocking to see the statistics of people in relationships that are feeling unfulfilled mm -hmm. and unhappy, mm -hmm. but for the sake of being with someone. They'll just stay in it regardless. They'll stay in there yeah. because the fear of aloneness and the fear of being with themselves mm -hmm. is higher that pain is higher than the other pain so they compromise in mediocrity mm -hmm. and i guess they exist they put a smile on their face everything is wonderful this is the way life is and or and it's then they get cancer. I, I made these they, they get cancer they get strokes and heart attacks well of course because it wears eventually it's going to wear on your emotions and it's going to your body's going to and that's how a lot of this Disease happens from disease in the body, yeah. right? Something isn't flowing, something's blocked, something's not right, and that's why a lot of people are getting that, or even the fear of making that mistake. So, can you discuss a little bit maybe the patterns derived from the fear of making mistakes? Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about judgment, if you don't mind. You sure can, yeah, yeah. go right yeah. ahead. Yeah, judgment is. I mean, judgment, <laughs> where do I start? <laughs> the word judgment implies there are two poles, mm -hmm. right? A good yes. pole and a bad pole. Mm -hmm. The good pole, you know, it's like, okay, check mark. Bad pole, yeah. Mm. Right and wrong. Mm -hmm. So one of the exercises that I wanted to command people that are watching this show is watch your vocabulary is that good? You know, I do a session. It's like, 
was it good? How was it? Was it good? I said, it was an experience. And experiences are just to be lived, not to be labeled. Mm-hmm. It served a purpose. It served a purpose for you. And this is what happened. This is what I felt. The minute we start pulling the power or the energy into the words good, right, mm-hmm. bad, this, this it brings being right. You know, it's like the end of a conversation. Like if somebody wants to start arguing, what is the bottom line of the argument? They want to be right. Exactly. exactly. Every, I mean, it's like two people want it to be right. Mm-hmm. It's disaster. Exactly. And what, what purpose does it serve? Is it fruitful? You know, sometimes it's just better to be the bigger person and just let it go. I mean, and it's I not think, really to be the bigger person in my, no, in my no. experience. It's just like, it's really worth it. I just want to be happy. Mm-hmm. Like, how, you know what? Really? Like, I said this, did you look at what you, did you look at your text message? You said you were arriving Mm -hmm. at this time, you were arriving. Okay, you know, and if I say I'm sorry, the words I'm sorry, Mm -hmm. (laughs) vibration goes down. I said, I am sure I arrived at the time I was supposed to arrive. Exactly. And and yeah, I apologize, but I mean, seriously, the Mm -hmm. bottom line is I just want to be happy. And and can Mm -hmm. we move on from this? Because we're going to keep... Like if you're going to carry it and carry it and carry it and remind me every single time. Yes. So, so is that when for a happy life, would you suggest setting boundaries then of what your expectations are? Well, I would say first start watching your language mm-hmm. and because how you vibrate, other people are going to vibrate towards you. Mm-hmm. So if where it, where in you, you are judging others. Mm-hmm. To be attracting that judgment onto you. Mm-hmm. So start dropping. You know, there's no right, there's no wrong. Well, you know, precedent here, precedent there, we're here, we're there. Everybody thinks they're right, or else they wouldn't be doing it. Exactly. And I think people judge too. They judge others before people will judge them because I think they know their own flaws. So I think if they point it out in someone else, it takes the eye off them and onto the other person. Mm-hmm. So pay attention because any division that you are creating, you will recreate that opposition and division across the board in your life. So meaning life will be hard on you. Mm-hmm. Well, life will pre- present you scenarios where you will have to, it will give you the opportunity to heal this. Mm-hmm. And, the, and if you don't take it, then it will keep coming back at you yeah. you know it's like it's very simple how would you like to be treated mm-hmm. and sometimes you need to train your relatives you know not to be like okay the insecurity like if you don't call me every day you don't love me like drop it mm-hmm. exactly you have to you have to grow up a little bit or in yeah. yourself and it's not always the other person people have busy lives and if somebody can't call you every day or if you text and because we're so used to everything being instant, but if you che- text somebody, they may not get to you right away in that next five minutes. It might be a couple of days. It might be mm-hmm. you know, anything, but you can't let your thoughts ruminate on this and now create these scenarios. You know, this person doesn't care. I sent them a text and now they didn't text back and then you just go crazy all day. So you preoccupy your mind being obsessed with this one text that really means nothing. You know, and or you're you're already superimposing on someone else why they're doing it, what they're doing it, how they're feeling when none of it could even be true. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So give freely mm-hmm. and don't hold back. Just give freely and no. expect. There's something very very well that goes like this: expect the best, but be prepared for the worst. Mm-hmm. And this is like a fine balance, a very fine line to keep the balance. That's where mastery comes in place. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, well, you know, you are devastated because your husband asked you for a divorce Mm -hmm. or your wife asked you for a divorce. Yes. So how are you navigating through your emotions? Mm -hmm. Are you, so who is the master? Are your emotions your taskmaster? Or are you the master of your emotions? Mm-hmm. So is 
is always who is in charge. Mm -hmm. Are you driving your vehicle? Are you a passenger? Yes. So it, all those perspectives are, are enhancing to our life experience. So watch, you know, how we use the good, the bad, the ugly, mm -hmm. the this. And it's, it, we can go on and on about yeah. trying to say how to enhance our experience mm -hmm. of life. Exactly. Our experience of happiness, our experience of mm -hmm. a challenge. You know, everything requires awareness. And this is why mm -hmm. the Belvas Pata, the angelic healing that, that was given by Almin is, for me, it has worked absolutely miracles because it works to, with sigils, which is angelic writing. They're mm -hmm. like, they're, they're very peculiar. We can mm -hmm. show them another time. Yes. And when I trace them in the person's body, mm -hmm. they have particles of awareness. Ah. So you start getting life at a different level. Mm -hmm. You get insights. You will feel different. You will be having these aha moments, mm -hmm. even if you didn't ask any questions. <laughs> even like, wow. Just, just insights, yeah, insights you never had before. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this is the difference between an intelligent person and a genius. Mm. Intelligence comes from the book. Okay. Genius comes from inside. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, I never prepared my lectures, my workshops. I was zero prepared for, for this yes. interview. Mm -hmm. And I just allowed the information to come through me, to flow. So I am talking to you completely empty. Yeah. You work and exactly the same that I do. I have no questions written. Yes. <laughs> Surprise, audience. <laughs> yeah. That's what I am. I'm in the moment. I'm mindful. I'm actually listening to my guest. And that's how you have a conversation. Not like, now, next question. Tell me about, I think for a lot of people, that would just be boring. And But a lot of people live like that. It's a, a life by numbers and they're not in the moments. They're going through the motions or they're just, it's empty. They're just constantly waiting for something that may never come. They're constantly waiting instead of enjoying life and in the moments. So that is, that's a very good point because what you're describing in my books is called the known. Mm. So huma humanity thrive in the known. Mm. So if I, run a mile how many mm -hmm. calories will i burn uh, so yeah. it's everything is stipulated all the steps are given so it is it is totally known and then we move out a little bit into the unknown and then we get into anxiety why because we cannot control the unknown we don't know what's going to happen what's going to be there who's going to be there oh my god it's like i'm invited to this party i don't know anybody mm -hmm. Oh my God, I start having anxiety. It sounds like <laughs> silly, but it is. Of course. And a lot of people have anxiety, you know, they, they have this fear of the future. But a lot of times I think too, if you don't label the situation as good or bad, that thing that you're afraid of might be the stepping stone to take you to the, the next place of where you need to be. So one of the things that I really thrive is living in the unknown. So mm -hmm. I make sure that I do something or feel something or explore something that is new almost every day. Mm. In, like yesterday, I had to wake up at four in the morning and not to go to the airport because that, no. that would be normal. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I woke up uh -huh. at four in the morning not to go to the airport yeah. and I was like, oh, how was that? I didn't mm -hmm. think I was going to be able to do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't sleepy or anything. So living in the unknown rejuvenates, regenerates, and it's fantastic. It's like, okay, go to the movies by yourself. Oh my God, I absolutely love going to the movies by myself. Mm -hmm. Go for dinner by yourself, experience that. Give yourself mm -hmm. that experience, go for walks. I mean, talk to this person, talk to a stranger, ask them. I mean, mm -hmm. I just go with the flow pretty much as people is overused, but in my life is really what it mm -hmm. is. It's only the flow because the flow is going to indicate me my next step. Exactly, exactly. And same for me now with doing the podcast, things like that. I'm talking to all kinds of brand new people. And same, even when I went, I took courses, there's a lot of people that probably, you know, if you're walking down the street, you wouldn't normally talk to them. But all of a sudden, now you get to meet all these great people. Because in our minds, we kind of, I think, label a little bit of how people are just by their outward appearance, when inside, they may be totally different. You mm -hmm. know, they may look like rusty and whatever on the outside, but inside, like you said, they're a kaleidoscope of color. 
and yeah. knowledge and wisdom and wealth and just like blow you away. And you're like, why didn't I meet this person sooner? <laughs> yes, you know, absolutely. And allow yourself to go out and meet somebody new or walk by that. I'm lucky enough. I live by a waterfront so I can go out and I can stand in nature, you know, and that's what I do. All some of that's my office is, you know, the water. <laughs> the water you know what i mean and it's just nice and you meet a lot of people you meet a lot of 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 just different just i think too because nature talks to you so if you're there to listen to some small still voices and the breeze and the birds and the you know what i mean nature knows how to get along you know beautifully so why Thank can't you. we <laughs> nature is a, is a great healer for depression and anything else. Yeah. I know you wanted to ask me what was the question before, Brad? Yeah, so we're going to go into some of the, I think I might leave it to a little bit later, but I want to jump on to something you may know a little bit about. So how do you feel about karma? Like, what is it? What does it do? Um, you know, does karma really come around? Karma, very, very interesting. Um, I have been delving into karma, the word karma all my life. Mm -hmm. Karma is, imagine a person that is, it gives you, say, $50. And at the, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you got to give me those $50 back. Mm -hmm. But if you don't give me those $50, then you're going to have to pay it forward. And mm -hmm. in, not in an easy way. Yes. So it is... It is um, a way of balancing soul lessons or contracts. Mm -hmm. And when one, when one lives in a life of division, mm -hmm. where there is the good and there is the bad, there is karma. Exactly. But when you go beyond the, the left and the right, the, the, mm -hmm. the good, the bad, the right and the wrong, and everything you become everyone and everything mm -hmm. which is the ultimate uh, enlightenment yes um one of the ultimate enlightenments let's say because once until we get there we'll find something else what exactly is, what would yeah. that be mm -hmm. so when you are into that oneness those 50 dollars that were given to you mm -hmm. it's like you already given to yourself it's the same thing yes it's almost like one of those uh, paintings of Monet they show you. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, it's like, you know, the, the petals everywhere, the grass mm -hmm. is everywhere, the yes. bridge is everywhere. You, yeah. It's hard to make a distinction. Yeah, because it's all soft, it's all muted, everything's blended very exactly. much so in, in a Monet. Yeah. Yes. So it's, it's kind of like that. Mm -hmm. The more we leave behind mm -hmm. a life of opposites, a life of saying, okay, Brad is there, I am here. Mm -hmm. When I become Brad, how can I owe anything when we are one? Mm -hmm. I owe nothing, I have no credit, no debit. Yes. Yeah, I think the tough thing is the, the oneness. I think people live more like a Picasso, <laughs> where, it's, <laughs> where it's more abstract and just out there and it's just, <laughs> yes. disconnected. <laughs> yes, so what we are here, like really yeah. what we are here to do <sighs> is just remind everybody that we are a consciousness superimposed in all beings and all mm -hmm. things. Yes, yeah. And it's <laughs> like, why would I want to hurt my ex mm -hmm. he is doing the best he can with what he has exactly, exactly. I, was talking, I was talking to a girl yesterday mm -hmm. and that i just met for the first time and i said i feel that i just i came to this meeting mm -hmm. to meet you because yes. i ask i wonder who i'm going to meet there and i then i talked to somebody else but she was the focus and mm -hmm. she was telling me about a relationship and she asked me and she's like, oh, my God, Sandra, you, you know so much. Like, I, in terms of my intuition, I was telling her a few things. And, and uh, she says, do you think he loves me? And I mm -hmm. turned around and I said, he loves you to the fullest, to the capacity of the size of his heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, yeah. now, if you want a bigger heart... That is your situation to change. Yeah, of course. And that's where I think growth comes in. And I think with things that happen in life, I think you have to thank the person for the experience and the lessons, you know, yeah. and, and let them go. 
and then you can yourself grow and things like same with forgiveness because as they say it's more about forgiveness is more about for you than for the other person because without you being able to forgive yeah. you're going to keep all that in like you say you'll cause cancer you'll have disease in your body you'll have all these things that are happening you'll have a lot of mental stuff depression you know because to say that the fear of the past or living in the past you know anxiety about the future because now they're not there but if you can thank for the experience to the universe to God, to yourself, to the other person, um, you know, I think that really does make a big, a big difference. But we'll squ uh, skip now just ahead a little bit. So then it's about the patterns derived from the fear of making a mistake. So if you can go over like some of the things like procrastination, indecision, anxiety, and living in the present moment, if you can just discuss yeah. those a little bit. Yeah, so... This is this is all caused by the factory, the head factory. I call mm. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Procrastination is also like based on fear of making a mistake. Mm. Uh, indecision is also fear of making a mistake. And why do we have this fear? Because we're labeling life. Mm -hmm. If you feel okay, you know what? I just want to walk instead of taking the cab mm -hmm. i'm gonna walk to toronto maybe it's gonna take me one week <laughs> but i just want to walk yes is that yeah. wrong no of course not but it, it gives you a new journey it puts you into the unknown it but i think in life that's all it is it's a series of mistakes because they're labeled as mistakes yes. but it's a series of doing it uh, wasn't it like with the light bulb too the same he did it like a thousand times but on the thousand and one it worked and it basically his view was that they weren't mistakes they were just not the right process <laughs> yes. until, so you have to try that. You have to walk for a week to find out if, you know, is, is that better? Because you might have that incredible journey in that week than just driving to Toronto or taking an Uber yeah. to Toronto yeah. or a cab or, or something like that. It's just in, in general, like myself as a hairstylist and some people too, they're self-employed. We live by risk. We live because you never know from one day to the next you know, am I going to, you know, have a hundred, not a hundred clients, but am I going to have a full day? Am I going to have an empty day? Are people, you know, move, shift, all that kind of stuff. So you're constantly, and I think that was the biggest thing for me was learning not to label situations as good or bad or yeah. people as good or bad so, and taking think, the lessons. That's exactly what my point was going mm -hmm. to be, Brad. When you have no judgment, you cannot make a mistake. Mm-hmm. So you see how it simplifies that step? Exactly. And then instead of, okay, am I going to move apartments? Yes or no? And then, okay, so just stop the logic. Stop, like, you know, don't think it's going to be farther. So don't think about how much. Don't think about distance. Don't think, just think, just feel it. Mm -hmm. Does it inspire me, that place? exactly uh, do well, i feel happy when i think about that place and mm -hmm. drop all the logic it's like mm -hmm. i say sometimes oh my god you're like paying this is so expensive and i said what you do not know is that it's more expensive for me not to do that mm -hmm. why do i say oh you're paying that membership is so hard so it's not high what i no. get from that is priceless. The experiences I get from being in that club mm -hmm. that I get to savor my lunch with the view of pine trees and tennis mm -hmm. courts and the breeze of the sunny afternoon is priceless. I go to the sauna is priceless. I go, mm -hmm. I experience fully every moment of that exactly exactly and that's what it is and i know a lot of people have questions about pricing but it's really about the transformation not so much about the price and a lot of people tend to judge people well that's going to be too high they can't afford it well how come you're already judging them by telling them they can't afford it if somebody wants the transformation or the outcome they'll pay whatever it is in order to achieve that if they want that solution that transformation that journey that you know uh, taste of whatever you're offering they'll they'll have the funds or they'll find the funds or they'll it's clear or intention exactly right. clear intention will attract will manifest and going back a little bit i feel like i wanted to tie something about mm -hmm. you said 
being, uh, you know, with the question of, am I going to have enough clients, mm -hmm. enough money, enough yeah. business, that. So why not shift that and enter into a field of joy, mm -hmm. you know, go and buy roses for yourself. And yeah. having those roses will expand and open your heart in ways yeah. that you don't fear. Exactly. All, yeah, all is well Whatever in my world. Mm -hmm. Ex exactly. And that's what it is, too, because, too, it's all your belief system. And I know a lot of people say, well, positive thinking doesn't work. Motivation coaches don't work. More, I mean, as I say, it may not right away, but I think over time, as long as you do something repetitively eventually it becomes part of you it's like people do every day when you tell your story it becomes part of you it may not be the absolute truth but it's your truth <laughs> you know of who it makes you right because we're all you know because we all want to per be perceived by others or they society it's always they <laughs> you know what i mean like you said don't worry who's saying that you're making the mistake is it you or is it society because society so, knows that it's a mistake. Let's and go from who they. Who are to they? We. Let's <laughs> exactly. go to, from they to we. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know that the angels don't have a um, first person; they only speak in in third person. Oh, we. okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. So that's a consciousness. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a collective consciousness. Exactly. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I just don't want to go too deep on this podcast because we, you know might freak oh, our listeners out. <laughs> <laughs> a little taste of what's to come and some upcoming, some upcoming yeah. things. But yeah, yeah. as I say, and, and if you're listening to this podcast or you're seeing it on YouTube, make sure to comment below um, what your issues are, what your things are. If you want to hear more from, from our guests, we're not quite done yet. We're going to wrap up shortly. But it's been so exciting and the time is just flowing. It's like there's no time at all. Just because when you're listening, because I think it is, we're, we're so used to linear time, but, but I think we're just on on the same time continuum where you know the present the past the future are all on one right we're always in the now all the time absolutely yeah. and i have found myself actually um i had some slight triggers lately of the past mm -hmm. and i have gone into this very moment to heal that past moment mm -hmm. by being present fully into something that I feel that it would have made a mistake, but without going into regret. Watch mm -hmm. out for regret because it's a very dangerous emotion, regret. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, low vibration. Um, the second guessing, that judgment mm -hmm. creates regret. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. So we're just going to wrap up a little bit. So one uh, last thing, or second last or third last thing. So can you talk maybe about some of the patterns of addiction? Well, addictions are patterns, and we it's amazing how this is working out because we started in what is a spirituality, being home to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And addictions are the result of exactly not being home to ourselves. Mm. So... Imagine we are this incredible, we're going to use the earth. We are the earth and the earth is, is full, is complete. And suddenly because of some experiences started to happen, perceptions to these experiences mm -hmm. make, start making us feel on whole mm -hmm. that we're not enough, that we are, um, there's something wrong with us whatever the belief system, the indoctrination we receive in our childhood and our early years of life mm -hmm. have a big impact. We actually are impacted from the moment that we are born before we're born. Mm -hmm. But I want to talk a little bit about being birthed through the canal, through the birth canal. Naturally, we get so much trauma in the head mm -hmm. already. So we have all these memories that come through that. And mm -hmm. also we have genetic memories, which is not really your memories or my memories or our memories, but our ancestors' memories. Yes. And they are at the DNA level. So there's so many layers, as you said earlier, that are playing all together. And we are a project. And what a wonderful project to take on. I'm going mm -hmm. to look at this fantastic field of endless and fertile possibilities mm -hmm. that is me. Full potential, not expressing yet, but I want to start like every day 
living my full potential mm -hmm. and going into the unknown to discover more potential because if yeah. you stay in the same pond instead of going to the ocean then there's not much to discover there mm -hmm. but going going to the addiction so addiction so the earth and all these patterns and memories and genetic stuff that comes in play in mm -hmm. place and they start making little holes mm -hmm. and all those little holes by the law of compensation the uh, decrease mm -hmm. that every hole has to be filled. Mm -hmm. So all those holes, oh, maybe if I buy a new pair of shoes, I feel better about myself because I'm unable to give myself self-love. Mm -hmm. So I have to go and buy a pair of um, um, Hugo Boss shoes. Mm -hmm. So I spend half of my paycheck in a, in a, yeah. in a pair of Hugo Boss shoes. Mm -hmm. Uh, then I go to work. I hate my job, so I need to go drinking after work. Yeah, and the shoe, new shoes you just bought that are uncomfortable and making your heels bleed. <laughs> that, on top of it, because they're making you happy. <laughs> they're not making you happy. Nothing is making you happy. Yeah, and we are have all these patterns. And I yeah. said, if you are happy sweeping the streets, even if you make like a hundred dollars a week, I'm just exaggerating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You will not have the need for shoes, for drinking, for nothing. No. There are absolutely no external needs or mm -hmm. because of the fulfillment of your heart. Mm -hmm. It's all that matter. And you will not be the tour. You'll be happy sipping coffee in your living room. Exactly. And I know, and I know there's difference. I know there's people in my life that I found that it's exactly like that. You don't need to go out. You don't need to spend a ton of money. You don't need, and sometimes those simplest things are the best things and they, they have the memories you're in the moments. And as I say, they are, they're priceless. It's more than, as I say, spending hundreds of dollars to go out for a night, drinking, seeing a show, doing whatever that society says, you know, is supposed to be fun. Right. And if you spend 500 bucks for the weekend or a thousand bucks for the weekend, you know what I mean? Like just some, maybe simply, you know, uh, being on a couch watching a movie is is nice instead of spending a thousand dollars, six hundred dollars a night for a, a hotel room, which you're hardly in. <laughs> yes. You know, so it, it, it's yeah. just all all relative and, and stuff so like this, that. The, yeah. The addictions, Brad, they are a result mm -hmm. of self-abandonment. Mm hmm. So, again, not being home for ourselves. But is there a way that you believe that people can reconnect with themselves? Yes. So they feel less abandoned. So we've been talking about it. Yeah. Trips to nature, mm -hmm. time alone, quiet time, meditation, do yoga, mm -hmm. find, find a, a group that makes you happy. If you want, we start with a group. But ultimately, the tribe is not the answer. No, no. But Could it's you... like we need, you know, sometimes we need to crutches before we need, we start mm -hmm. walking. So, yeah, do you find this can happen too when people are constantly breaking promises to themselves? The breaking promises to themselves goes, they, it goes back to lack of self love. Mm. You, you have lack of self respect mm -hmm. because you broke a promise. If you say you're going to call somebody, Mm -hmm. Call somebody yes. last time. If you say you're going to send an email, do that. Mm -hmm. Follow through. That's how you will build self-respect. Mm -hmm. From exactly. that, Be your time own. alone, mm -hmm. self-respect goes together, and then you start coming home to yourself. Mm -hmm. There's no need for breaking promises. Actually, there's no promises, just intentions. Exactly, exactly. And I guess it's just knowing, or if you can't fulfill a commitment, you know, be accountable to yourself and say, yeah. hey, I know I was supposed to have that report on your desk by five, but this exactly. is what's happening. And then, then you're accepting responsibility and you're correcting it. You're not saying it's wrong. I said five, I'll have it to you by five, 15, six o'clock tomorrow morning. But at least, you know, you're making a commitment and say, or yes, I know I was supposed to phone you and I didn't. You know, it, as I say, it's just, it's good for you, but even for yourself and say, okay, I'm going to treat myself. I've been working hard all week. I'm going to do this. And then something comes up and you break that promise to yourself. Oh, well, maybe next time. But I think too, the more you do it, not so much other people, but just constantly breaking promises to yourself, I think can have an effect um, on your brain waves, your body, 
um, just in general, your life in general. I think too, you have to be true to your core. And, and, and you know, obviously, if you're going to make yourself a promise, keep it uh, as much as you can, set some boundaries and, you know, make the life happen that you can experience joy and have that bliss that life, you know, is, is all about. So as we wrap up, I want to say thank you, Sandra. I know we have lots more to talk about and tons more, tons more, tons more, but I know for a lot of people, this is your hour of power and this is the time to get encouraged and that sort of thing. So Sandra, with our audience, because this podcast is about empowerment, what words of empowerment or what would you like to talk about that would be empowering for our listening audience? Well, what is coming to me as you ask me is I want to command every single person to find their own mantra and repeat it for 60 days. So find an area that you would like to change in your life, whether it, if you want to, to have more love in your life, what do you do? You give love to yourself or you become that. So, you would, your mantra would be, I am love. So before you get out of your bed, your first thought should go into your mantra, I am love. You repeat it throughout the day. If you have to write it down in sticky notes in your car and your binders, so do that. Before you go to sleep, do that too. Say, I am love. And just count 60 days is a good, it would shift that. If you want to change your financial situation, and it's not only about finances, but people identify this word with finances, but it's like across the board, I am abundance is the mantra. For abundance of everything in your life. So um, if you have fears, one mantra would, could be, I am unstoppable. So just find that which comes. And every mantra is, is in the present, in the present moment. And also owning it. It's not I want to. Never use want. Always mm. I am. Mm. Yes, because the I am is so more, you have so much more that, empowering than yeah. I want. And and the same is same. If the universe hears I want, it'll say, okay, we'll leave you in wanting. <laughs> you want, so you've got what you asked for. Wanting yes. <laughs> this and not being as the I am. Yeah. Yes, yes. So I am love. I am abundance. I am unstoppable. I am divine i am whatever it is that you feel you have to enhance uh, mm. i am at ease but don't go into negative always keep it positive it's called mantra affirmation it's, it's in the positive yeah and that's amazing and i know it'll really help our audience kind of get there i'd love to hear your comments and probably they like to see you too so i know you do a lot of uh healing therapies sandra what's the best way for them to follow you or find you or make some comments um where where should our audience go to find you well right now uh my website is um is resting I don't know. Yeah, but I believe you have a Facebook page. Yes, I do you? have a Facebook okay. page. So is uh, my spiritual page is Sandra Saradisi Spiritual Master. So mm -hmm. the last name is S-A-R-A-D-E-S-I Saradisi or Saradisi Spiritual Master. And then I have a personal account as well in, on Facebook. And on Instagram is Sandra Saradisi 11. And though you can message me or find me there. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then I'll be at, I don't know when, how, when is this show going to be released? If they want to find me at the Total Health Show, I will be at the Toronto Convention Center, May 11, 12, and 13, booth number 814. And we will be uh, addressing pretty much everything that we talk here and also giving uh, the actual uh, in-person healing sessions with the oils, with the meridians, with the angels. We will have the runes. We will have uh, lots of tools to help you um into a shortcut mm -hmm. of your higher consciousness i am such a firm believer of shortcuts mm -hmm. and some people feel that if they're not spending long hours on hard work it's mm -hmm. not worth it that is a belief system mm -hmm. you can attain enlightenment you know forget about time in timelessness let's say 
Exactly. Yeah, I know definitely I'll be there. So if you're around the Toronto area at the Metro Convention Center, May 11th to 13th, you can come check us out. You can meet Sandra. You might even see me there. And I'll have the links for you um, somewhere either in the description or below the video if it's on YouTube. I thank you for listening. And I want to give a couple of shout outs. One, like we were talking before, nothing happens by coincidence. Everything happens for a reason. So I want to give a shout out to Julie at Divine Harris Studio. And you know, you'll know what you did. And I'm actually going to see you Monday. So <laughs> we'll, we'll connect then. And I also want to, funny enough, we were talking about karma. So if you're visiting me at Salon, obviously that's where I work, is karma. <laughs> ah, <laughs> so, no way! Yeah, yes, yeah, it's true. It's true. And I am a, a celebrity hairstylist. That's what I do. I do real hair and uh, karma, karma. And then you'll see us both um, on the 11th to the 13th. And thank you for viewing. We liked your comments. Make sure to subscribe. And we'll see you next time on the podcast. Thank you so much for listening.